Good morning and welcome to day 29 on the Appalachian Trail. So we just got dropped off from our shuttle um, where I left off yesterday, Garin Flow Gap, and we only have 6.6 .6 miles to get to Hot Springs. I spent the night in Hot Springs last night um, in that beautiful Verbo that Oliver rented for us. And I even housed one of the hikers last night because there was extra bedrooms who uh, got shut out of the hostel because it was so crowded. The hostel had no room and it's a huge hostel, apparently, Laughing Heart. Um, but so many people came out of the mountain yesterday because of the snow and the cold. Even some people who had gone further north um, left the mountains to come back to Hot Springs because of the weather. So the weather's been just wacky. And right now it's flurrying, um, but it's not really that cold. And we're heading down in elevation. So as you can see, there is no snow here, but um, we're at about 2,000 feet right now. But you go to 3,000 and there's snow, <laughs> as you could see from my previous video. Um, so Oliver is on a flight right now. He's heading here, I'm so excited. And he will be here by two o'clock, which will give me plenty of time to finish this section of the hike. So I'm, you know, done with, you know, Hot Springs area, two Hot Springs. And then when I get back um, to town, I should have time to um, go to the outfitter, figure out uh, what's going on with my uh, Nikkor headlamp, which I think is actually kaput. So um, even though I bought a cheap one at Walmart, I'm probably going to see about buying one that isn't, that is a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to ch check that out. I have to do a very small resupply at the grocery store. I'll buy a little groceries for us to enjoy over the weekend. And I forget what else I have to do, but <laughs> a couple of town errands uh, before he arrives. And then our plan, the weekend's supposed to be beautiful. So yay. So our plan is to hike uh, tomorrow. So heading north, what we're going to do is slack pack. Yay. And Micah, look at Micah, has no pack today. Look, Micah has no pack today. Yay. Um, yeah, I think he's happy about that too. Um, so our plan is to hike tomorrow um, north, probably 10 miles or so, I have to see, and then have a shuttle shuttle us back to Hot Springs, where we'll spend the night in our Verbo again. Um, I just didn't want Oliver to have to bring sleeping bag and two-person tent and it would have been a huge just for the weekend. So we said, well, we'll just spend the night in the bed. <laughs> what a concept. Um, <laughs> and then the next day we'll get, we'll probably drive to where, cause he'll have a car. We'll drive to where we left off um, and then hike north from there and then try to get a shuttle from there to where the car is and then drive back to Hot Springs. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's all about making progress north. Now, some people, what they do is they drive, um, get dropped off north and then, draw, and then hike back south. And that's okay. But I don't know, I like the feeling of progressing north. Um, so that's just another way to do it. And then on Monday, um, he leaves early in the morning, um, and I have a tentative appointment to see that uh, Ridge Runner who is having some issues, and I'm going to evaluate her orthopedic issues, which, again, for patient privacy, I don't want to talk about. Um, and then she's going to drive me back uh, further north where Oliver and I left off. So I'll be that much closer to Irwin, Tennessee, which is the next major city that I will be uh, going to, to, towards. 
And that I think is about 69, 70 miles away from Hot Springs. Um, so by the time I get there, if Oliver and I do 10, 15, 20, 25 miles, I'll be that much closer, um, 40 or 50 miles uh, closer to Irwin. All right, well, that's the plan. Today is Friday. I hope you're all having a wonderful Friday and um, hopes, hope it becomes a nice weekend for you. And I have to say, <laughs> last night, sleeping in a bed, not in a shelter with five other men, <laughs> just with my dog by my side, I slept like, I, I haven't slept in a long time. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, well, that's not true. I sleep really well in my tent when it's not 25 degrees out. <laughs> but uh, last night was exceptional. It's one of those things where you wake up and you say, oh my gosh, it's 6.30 in the morning. H how did that happen? <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a good sleep. And this morning I walked over to the Hot Springs Diner and had breakfast with a couple of other hikers, a couple that are gonna go on today that I've hiked with before. One who I had already interviewed, um, Seven Iron and Sideways. Sideways was there too. We had breakfast together. And then I got to see another couple of girls who were young women who are hiking. Uh, her name is Chickadee and Half Pint. So we had a nice chat, but lots of people are in town. Uh, Peanut Butter, the guy from Germany, Kai, and a few of the other guys that I spent the shelter with, they're all in uh, Hot Springs taking a zero today. So, all right, well, that's the story. And uh, I will keep you posted on what's going on. This is the trail today. It's just basically, the usual with the beautiful rhododendrons and no snow, but it's, it's pretty cold. I got to put my gloves back on. My hands are getting cold. All right. Love you all. Happy Friday. I don't know if you can tell, but there is still snow up at the higher elevations because as I'm hiking down into hot springs and I look up to the mountains that are higher, you can see snow um, and I just... The shuttle driver told me that they had to rescue a couple of um, hikers last night. Um, well, early this morning, not rescue, but they were just so cold and uh, they got off the mountain a little premature because it's just, it's just cold up there. So yeah, crazy weather. And it's, it's spitting down here. Um, a few flurries here and there, but nothing, nothing bad. Uh, my thermo it says it's 30, yeah, sorry, it says it's 35 degrees, so not bad at all. Anyway, it's been a very enjoyable hike so far, and uh, we're heading down to Hot Springs. I also wanted to take this opportunity to just remind everybody, anybody who's uh, subscribed to my channel, that um, I am hiking um, not just for me and my sabbatical, which is um, something that, of course, I've wanted to do for a very long time, but also for Cure International, which is the organization that I talked about in my um, introduction video. They are an amazing organization, Cure, C-U-R-E International, that raises hospitals, that, that builds hospitals for children with orthopedic uh, impairments in developing countries. Right now they have seven hospitals in Africa and one in the Philippines. When I had the pleasure of volunteering for them, the hospital that I volunteered for was in the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, and it was just an amazing experience uh, that I will never forget because how these children are transformed because they are ostracized in their communities because of their orthopedic impairments, whether they can't walk properly or, um, you know, their arm is malformed, whatever the disability might be, the hospital will take them in 
give them free medical care and they go back into their community and they are playing with the children, their other their peers again, and they're no longer ostracized, which does a tremendous amount for their well-being, um, not to mention their um, mental well-being as well as their physical well-being. So it's a, it's a great organization. And I know that I talked about some examples of some of the children that I had some experiences with. But I also wanted to mention, and I'm going to use a fake name, Ramon. This young man, well, he was a boy, so I would say he was 10. When he came to the clinic in Santo Domingo, he had contractures in probably every single joint of his body. A contracture is when you can't, for instance, an elbow contraction would be when your elbow is stuck in a flexed position and you can't straighten it. Well, pretty much every single joint of his body was in contracture because he was, he had developed juvenile um, rheumatoid arthritis at a very young age. And because they did not have the resources and they did not understand why their child was in so much pain, the parents just had him unfortunately stay in bed because they didn't know. Um, and so, I don't, I, this makes me really sad to think about him. Um, they didn't know that there were medications and interventions that could ha help him. When he came to us, his contractions were so bad that I would spend probably two hours a day stretching and doing range of motion exercises with him. And by the time I left, his range of motion had significantly improved. Of course, by then he was on proper medication and um, doing all sorts of therapies to try to get his um, joints open again. And by the time I left and I was unable to follow up because of communication issues, but um, by the time I left, he was doing so much better. But to stretch him and to get his range of motion back was quite a challenge. And I was grateful for the hospital for giving me the opportunity to be able to help him. And I never, I, I don't know what happened to him, but uh, my guess is he did very well because he was on the road to improvement. And I was able to um, teach some of the other therapists there what he needed uh, to advance in his functional abilities. And uh, they followed the lead very well, and they hopefully did follow through with, with helping him. So anyway, if you haven't donated yet and you feel so moved, I can tell you that your donation will go to an excellent organization and there are so many children that are still waiting for care. Um, they have a, a waiting list. And the more we can help them, the sooner these children can get care. So um, I just wanted to every once in a while remind everybody that I'm not just hiking for me. I'm not just hiking for my sabbatical. But every step I take are for those children. Some of them... Sorry. Some of them have to go through some very painful treatment in order to get their abilities to walk again. And many of them do. And many of them are successful. And a lot of it is because of the incredible team that work together to help these children and your donations to help them. So thank you for all of those people who have donated already. Um, I don't know what my tally is. Uh, Colin Olson, who I'm working with over at Cure International, promised me that he'll give me a tally when I finish um, of everybody who's donated. So, um, and I want to personally thank every single one of you when that happens. Uh, but for now, I just want to personally thank everybody who has donated and uh, to know that uh, your 
donation is going to an incredible, wonderful cause. Um, on my channel, Sparrow on Sabbatical, there is a little link where it says donate to cure and you just hit that button and uh, that, that that hit the link not the button you hit the link um and it'll come up so uh thank you to all those who have already and remember no amount is too small so uh give whatever you can uh so uh, and, and and i'm grateful okay i'm gonna carry on the hot springs we go all right Love you all. Bye. This one's for you, Ollie, who's on an airplane on his way here. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me away from you. <laughs> I know, I'm losing it. <laughs> so I'm descending now into um, the city of Hot Springs. Uh, North Carolina. So it should be down there in about half a mile. All right. Yeah, there's more of a view of the town. Pretty cool. So we're in Hot Springs and the dogwoods are in bloom. How pretty. And that is the Smoky Mountain Diner, which um, as you know, I spent the night here and then I hiked back down um, and I had breakfast there this morning and oh my gosh, that was amazing. I got my pancakes, so good. And then there's the, down this road, oops, Mike just pulled me. Down this road to the left is the Hillbilly um, Market, which is where I'm heading next. <laughs> All right.